Welcome to Monday, Wednesday night journey with me from St. Kennedy, Black Man. For fuck's sake, man. I'm going to work for the fronts. Fucking boiling under this mask. Jesus Christ. It doesn't even look like Vince McMahon. Best attempt for the creators of people who create masks. I think one of us should literally go in with that mask and see if we can get away with Vince. We could do. Just sound wear a, a suit. Sound and... a bit robotic, though, wouldn't we? Sadly, yes. Anyway, I'm going to put my glasses back on because I, I prefer being Mr. Parkin. And by the way, we are the British Fist. Gotcha. We're not Kane McMahon, as we'd call I'm Mr. Parkin. This guy is not Kane Tino. No, he's not the Cobra or Sober. I don't know what you called the tag team. It's NJ, people. Kane McMahon. I like it. What's up? Kane fucking McMahon. If you have any questions... Please put them down in that comment section below as per usual. We start off with a question from Playlist Maker SG. Actually, it's actually three questions. Do you think WWE could have benefited from Chris Hero? Yes. I don't think he would have been a big player, but I think he definitely would have been a good talent to have around because he had a good size. I think his wrestling style was pretty good as well. I don't think he, he wasn't just your typical indie guy. So I think WWE could have got a little thing out of Chris here. I'm not sure he would have been a main eventer, but they definitely could have got something out of him, which is probably why they wouldn't weren't too bothered about at, without firing him because I believe he just didn't really do what WWE wanted to do, and you know people ain't prepared to do that. Then they just not you're just not going to have to do business with him. What about Cesaro? But Cesaro definitely Thank is you. exactly the same kind of guy in my opinion. Uh, he's just the kind of guy you could use on the roster, but will never really be a big main eventer guy. Well, that's what I felt. That's what I felt. Is WWE Studios a bigger problem to the company than anything? Well, it depends whether it's making a profit or a loss. If it's making a profit, then it's a good asset to the company. But if it's losing the money, then it's a problem. I'm sorry. I think the studio is extra money for the WWE because it's in the movie business and stuff. The Marine stuff, I'm not sure how far they're going to take this. Yes, every new wrestler that comes in that has a background in the Marine or the build like a Marine could fit into the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. But yes, it does benefit on if the movie succeeds like the Scorpion King. Do you reckon John Cena will be around for the 12th Marine? That'd be interesting. Not him, not him. No, not him. He'll be his not grandson him. or something. Have WWE stage designs gone far too stale and are too similar? Back in the day, every show's designs were different, but now it seems like every stage is the same concept or just the raw stage copy. Yeah, I think that's part of the budget cuts more than anything. But yeah, I do miss it when we used to have like real specific... Um, we used to have specific stage designs. I, I mean, it, it did at least make the show feel special when you first turned it on from a presentation standpoint. They save all their money for WrestleMania because I think yeah. when it comes to the smaller pay per views, like Armageddon used to have good stuff, mm. like possibly Backlash and stuff used to have special entrances. They used to have the things, didn't they, that went in like that? Uh, all that kind Remember? of stuff, yeah. Unforgiven and stuff. But now it's all saved for WrestleMania, which it should because that's their biggest pay. And one that everyone tunes in to see, but the smaller pay per views, instead of having TLC with hanging chairs, yes, it fits concept, it's not really exciting. So, yeah, I think it is a bit of a shame to just see a stage with the word written on top of it. Yeah, I mean, you, when, you want, when you want people to watch your shows and when people do tune in to watch them, you know, you just, if you don't have a specific stage design and make it feel a bit different and a bit more special than just a three hour raw, because essentially, you got three-hour pay-per-view and three-hour raw, and if you have a raw set, you, it can essentially feel like a three-hour raw you're paying for. So you've got to try and set your pay-per-view out a little bit to make it feel a little bit different. Yes, there's more wrestling on it and less promos, but you've got to make it feel a little bit more different. And one of the ways they used to do that was the stage design. It's a shame that I don't know, but like I said, it's probably budget cuts. Cashmaster21. What do you think would have happened if WCW let DX in, and do you think WWF slash E made the right move in sending them? This is that segment where they're on the... Uh, you, you remember the segment, don't you? Tank. Yeah. yeah. What would, I wonder what would have happened if WCW let them in. I mean, they were never going to. But if they did, that would have been interesting. Yeah, it would have been a big raid show for uh, WCW yes. for having DX mm. there against whoever their top time would but be. But at the same time, it may have drew them a rating, but it would have been basically free advertising for WWF at Maybe the time, that. wouldn't it? So... You know, it's probably a good idea they didn't let him in, although it would have been like a nice little mini invasion angle, I guess. I think, I think the storyline should have gone ahead. I think it would have made that ball filter for their rival at the time. It would have been a good competition. It would have probably drew a rating. It would have 
gave us matches. And I think it would have been good. And plus, it would have outdone the invasion that happened many years later. To be honest, there's no way Bishop and McMahon were going to agree on anything there. So mm-hmm. probably best that it to happen as it was. Stuart Allison. Do you think the WWE should put better superstars in the pre-shows of pay-per-views to attract more viewers? Um, I mean, they've they've had people like Miz on there. They once had the the New Age Outlaws versus the Uso, no, the Gold Dust and Stardust on there, didn't they? Before they became, before we became, sorry, Goldust and Goldie Rhodes, and they've had some big names on the. I mean, they had Daniel Bryan on the pre-show at one point. With a, they've had Cesaro on there a few times, winning the U.S. Championship. Had, so they have had. I mean, there's no point in putting like a big superstar like a Batista or a John Cena on there. That would be a little bit silly. You want to save them for for when people actually pay for the show. That's because they're your main draws. So it would be a little bit silly if they just put better superstars in there. I'm sick and tired of pre-show. It's nothing like that heat they had. It's nothing even close to it. What they should do, we've been asked questions in the past. We've said it before in past videos. It should be used, even though they've got their own pay-per-view now or their special show. NXT match. A whole match builds up to that particular pay-per-view, and that should be the pre-show match. So the NXT should, the NXT superstars should have the pre-show. Is I think saying. they should have. A, even though they have a pay-per-view yeah. now, they should still have a special slot. That's an interesting idea. I, I, I yeah. I mean, I do. The thing is, I think WWE like to build up a pre-show match, and uh, with NXT, I don't really think you could do that because Maybe. they're taped in advance. But some of the pre-show matches. Oh, they've been shit. Yeah, I agree so with I, that. I'm just sick and tired of it. I can make a rant on this, but it's not a rant. It's a Q&A. Well, you know, it's very simple, MJ. All you need to do is stop watching the pre-show yeah, well, and that's just what watch do. the pay-per-view. Yeah, that's what I do, yeah. yeah that's that's what right, do. people. You don't have to watch the pre-show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just saying. Uh, UH Type 1. What if WWE do something like a Raw Attitude Era special? Do you think wrestling fans that stop watching will tune into the show? And do you think such a show would put down current WWE superstars and causing ratings to drop even more further in the future? It'd be on the network. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would I mean, be on the network. But if they had a Raw an Attitude Era special Raw, it would draw a rating. Because you know for a fact that old disillusioned fans no, wouldn't come and watch no, it. No, 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 no. T- yeah. uh, uh, extreme Wolves. That's meant to be actually real. Weapon usage, blood. No, not even close to that. So I don't think the WWE, even now, could think, what could we bring for attitude? What could we do? We can't do blood. Sorry. We can't do headshots. No. So I think even though they, even they tried to bring it now, like they tried to do extreme rules, it would fail. No. But at least that you have the have raw attitude era special raw, which just right. with its name alone would draw in fans, in my opinion. But a very good counter argument in this uh, that UH Type has actually put in here, saying that would it just put down the current superstars and cause ratings to drop even further in the future? I mean, I think that it would just you'd have a peak rating and then it would just go back to where it was. I think because. The only people you're going to draw in are people that don't give a shit about today's product and just want to see some of their old stars that they remember and love, and then they'll just go again, and then it will just, you know, go back to how it was. That's how extreme rules, if anything, should be. That's where all the attitude era stuff should be. Hello. Out- attitude era stuff should be. But to be honest, I think any actually, the WWE have lost touch. I agree. Um, Renegade Man 83. Do you think John Cena ruined the Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose feud? I mean... Having him put in there wasn't the best of ideas, in my opinion. Um, but I don't think he ruined it. I mean, we still got a pretty good payoff at End of the Cell. I mean, I even watched the match. That's the first match I've watched on pay per since WrestleMania 30. I'm sorry, that was going to be the finale to their feud, as for now. Adding Cena to it, yes. I think, why add Cena to the finale of what the fans are dying to see. Yes, in the end, they still got to face each other, but then you throw in Bray Wyatt. I think adding wrestlers to a few that was your hottest thing going was a terrible idea, even though, like Mr. Parker said, there's still some complimentary to it. Mm. Do you think the WWE should have given the WWE belt to Jerry Lawler, even if it was for one day, just to give him that defining moment? I must admit, do you remember watching that TLC match with Jerry Lawler where he almost won the belt against Miz? I almost think, looking back at it, why the fuck not have done it and just have Miz win it back the next week? Now, why why not? It would have probably ruined Miz's push, but at the end of the day, what does that even matter now? Do we even think about Miz's WWE Championship? Is he a big player for the company? No. So, looking back at it in hindsight, yeah, why the fuck not? It would have drew a rating. I think fans complain about who gets the championship and how much of a joke it was. I think giving it to Jerry Lawler, 
If he was to retire after that feud, then yes. The fact he didn't, I'm glad that he didn't get the championship. When is Sammy Callahan going to debut on NXT? No idea. I've had no updates on when Sammy Callahan, Sammy Callahan might date. I don't. I'm not really even sure. I know his name Solomon Crow, but I'm not sure about what his gimmick's going to be or anything. So I'm afraid I'm not really up to date on that. And you know, if I, if you do watch my NXT reviews, maybe I'll mention it if I find some news at some point. His his character's going to be like Tarzan. I, I you know what? It wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me judging by his work he did on the independent scene. When John Cena does feud with Rusev, do you think the crowd will get behind him or will it be the same knowing he will carry the American flag? Will the crowd get behind Rusev? Yes. Everyone they will, faces yeah. Cena, everybody faces yeah. John Cena, they go behind that. Anyone. But. He's Slater. Has the feud got to the point where people are just going to boo Rusev, whoever faces him, or is it gone to the point where John Cena is that bad as a, is that bad as a baby face in terms of the crowd that they will cheer, they will cheer a character that hates America over a guy that they think is just massively stale. Every example in the past, they've always chosen the opponent over Cena. I think Rusev, no matter what they do, he could be flipping a murderer. Oh, come on, Rusev! Come on! Yeah, I, I don't care. I think they just, they don't like Cena that much. Anyone will get cheered. Well, we'll see at WrestleMania 31, so yeah. we'll, we'll see then. Dan Haynes, are the adult wrestling fans going to get fed up and sick of Roman Reigns before he reaches the top of the mountain? Not now he's injured, because now he's been off TV for a little bit and we're not seeing massively strong booking. So I don't think just yet. I think yes. It was, getting to, the point, it was getting to the point where they were getting fed up, but now he's injured. He's going to be off TV for a week and it'll come back and you know people won't, will have forgotten about it by then. It'll just come in like a new slate. I want to count, uh, count you, because yes, beforehand, up to the autumn feud, he was pretty much Superman. He got injured, but he's going to come back. And because he's back, the do we think that he needs to make his comeback brilliant, big, Go for, your, for that run again. So I think it's going to happen again. I think fans who saw the bolts in how quickly they're building him, it's going to happen again. It feels like I'm watching another version of Super Cena. Surely he needs to be built up slowly. There's nothing wrong with losing matches. But no, it appears we've got another WWE cartoon superstar who can't be beat. I understand that. But at the same time... It's got to the point now where WWE needs to try and make new stars as fast as possible. They can't just be patient with this anymore because they're just going to run out of guys to make into stars eventually. To build up stars, do you have to win every match? You need to win most matches. I mean, you, you can lose the odd match here and there. Because it took Reigns to face the old Viper Orton to finally lose a match. It took the Viper, the old Orton, to beat Reigns. No one else was seeming to do it. Evolution. Good point. Sorry. But we shall move on. Robert Hernandez, with Bad News Barrett returns, should he be pushed as a main eventer? Oh. Start off at mid-card, then if he doesn't get injured for three months, then maybe you can put him over as a main eventer. The guy gets injured so much, it's not his fault, but I'm just saying. He's so over. They finally found a character that works. Wrestling's fine. I think if he comes back, reclaims the IC again, which seems to be his favourite belt, I think... Or a chance at the Rumble, or anything. I think that even Money in the Bank win, I think it should be time. Yes, his injury is not as bad as Ziggler's, but still plays in his favour to finally get where he should have been. Aaron Kreis, would you like to see WWE get rid of Raw and rename it to Nitro? I know you are not a massive fan of WCW, so that's a big no-no for you. A big no-no for me as well, because Raw has had all these years as the main brand on WWE, and that's what it's recognized for. I mean, you've got the name brand of WWE, but the name brand of Raw that's been around for over 20 years now. So why get rid of that and put name it Nitro, which hasn't been around for 15 or so years now? Or well, actually, no, more like 13 years. So that, that, that would make no sense at all. And I think some fans, even if you did turn to Nitro, the hardcore fan, long-term fans will click to it, but newer fans will just think it's just a typical name. Yeah. To be honest with you, a lot of fans that did click on it, they wouldn't click on it for long because they would realise really how shit the WWE was. And they didn't have to watch it. They could turn it off if they didn't like it. True. Should WWE rename WWE to WCW or ECW? Oh. No, no, moving on. Should WWE let the fans make matches on Raw and the pay-per-view? Pretty sure. I mean, I mean, have some sort of decision, maybe some sort of popularity vote, but I don't think fans should be making matches or deciding what we see on pay-per-view because I think then fans, you know, a lot of fans are there, I'm sorry to say, are very fickle and, you know, would never get long-term storylines, would never get 
you know, the shows just just be so convoluted and so complex and so complicated that casual fans would have no idea what the fuck was going on. Agreed. But the only thing I would do, go home show to the pay-per-view, have fans vote of what the match type should mm. be for the pre-show. I think make the pre-show more exciting and interactive may make that seem more interesting. What about Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 31? Mm. Not a bad idea. I mean, I mean... Daniel Bryan's injured right now, as you're so trying to absolutely yeah. demonstrating there. But for a guy at WrestleMania 30 that had the massive moment, and you know he was supposed to lose the belt to Lesnar anyway, so would it be a good idea to put Daniel Bryan over again? But would they be able to trust him as a top guy with this injury and him having to change his in-ring style? Why do that? When, why why do that when you can put the onus on someone else who's got more of a future in terms of age? And I think that is very true. I think. With Daniel Bryan's return being delayed, it seems like in reports, I th- if he returns a month before WrestleMania, let's just say that for instance, is he really going to be fighting fit to face a monster that could mm. break him so quickly? Yeah, they took the risk with The Undertaker, but I'm saying Daniel Bryan should still be careful with Daniel Bryan. Yeah, he will have to change his in-ring style very drastically, which may result on him... Not being as over as he was, but hopefully the character will, you know, remain will remain very um, ambivalent amongst fans fans' memories when he returns. Do you think the WWE will have Triple H versus The Rock at WrestleMania 31? We've had this a few times now. We heard news last year they were going to do this whole thing with Triple H versus The Rock, and you know the ownership would be on the line with Vincent Mann choosing The Rock to fight for him, and that never really happened. And then you have to kind of think with. With the whole addition of Vincent Mann making that stipulation for the Team Authority versus Team Cena match, whether or not they maybe are building up to the Triple H versus Rock match, and maybe they're really putting the full motion on maybe let's transfer over ownership from Vincent Mann to Triple H in storyline so people associate Triple H as the owner, or Stephanie McMahon as well as the owner. So it looks like they're kind of planting it. Whether or not they'll go there, we don't really know. I think, if anything, if it weren't The Rock... Reigns. The reason I say Reigns is that the championship reigns. Because like we said in the last Q&A, save the championship for next year. The reason I say Reigns, Reigns hasn't actually had his one-on-one with Triple H yet, which I think he should have. Mm. I think having Reigns and Triple H at WrestleMania, yes, sadly Triple H would have to win, but it's not always about the win, like I was saying earlier. It's still about the outcome of how good the match was. Maverick AC69. Who or what do you think is really to blame for WWE, the WWE product being in the horrible shape that it's been for the past five or six years? How much time you got? <laughs> How much fucking time have you got? We let's, got... <laughs> we got we got two minutes left, so <laughs> let's let's do this. Um, well, let's not forget the fact that we're saturated with WWE on Raw, NXT, Superstars, Main Events, SmackDown, Network. three hour pay per views, The Network. So that's not that's one thing. We're saturated with it. So how you know how are we really supposed to care about it massively when we're saturated with it every fucking day? Remember when we subscribed to WWE on YouTube? How many fucking WWE photo uh, videos get coming up in our in our subscription feed? We immediately unsubscribed just because of that. Um, the writing has declined very very much. So, and I think that's mainly due to the fact that there's no wrestling writers in WWE anymore. You said John Cena. That's my one. You, I don't have to explain why, because there's many fans that could give you reasons. What, about Buy Beach or something. No. Obviously. The main thing is, WWE, in my opinion, it, it's a dying business, wrestling. It got to the point now where wrestling is just in one of those periods where, you know, people just aren't going to watch it and they will, you know, they want, they don't want their intelligence insulted. And I think a lot of people are feeling like wrestling just insults their intelligence now. The, ex- the thing about that is that fans are feeling that way, but still many people are becoming wrestlers. So obviously mm-hmm. they feel strongly about the company or strongly about wrestling itself, but us who are watching it are just not buying into it, as you can see by some network downfalls, the merchandise downfalls, the cuts the WWE are doing. It's just the interest in wrestling itself is dying, even though people that are holding on to the company, like I've tried i just losing it but at the end of the day we could blame the environment you know which is you know quite quite possible the wrestling environment and you know whatever's going on there but at the end of the, no, no, at the end of the day uh, global warming is going to take over but at the end of the day 
The person to blame, really, there's only one person to blame, and that's Vincent Mann, <laughs> because he owns the company. You know, and if your company is going downhill and the product you're putting out is going downhill, the first person you blame is the boss. Well, after WrestleMania down, when the big match happens. Well, yeah, maybe we'll be blaming Triple H. Oh, how fun would that be for you, criticising the WWE products? And Look, he's made NXT. Favorite. He's made NXT awesome. Yeah. So I think, Vince, you're to blame. Just give up. Let Triple H kick your ass at WrestleMania. And you watch. It might not change the WWE dramatically, but at least you have a fresh mind in the company. An interesting question to end out the Q&A, no, no doubt. I think there are many other reasons that you guys have come up with that, you know, why the WWE has gone downhill and been in real horrible, horrible shape Actually, in the last five, no. six, year, six years. You put them in the comment section below. We'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. And if you have any more questions, please ask us. And thank you very much for watching. We try to make these as entertaining as possible for you. And if you do feel that way, please make sure you subscribe to our channel. Like our video, share our video, continue to watch our video, do whatever you can. But please continue to send in questions because there'll be more to come to entertain you. And before I go on any more to like a news reporter, for Mr. Parkin sitting right here as usual, me and Jay sitting right here as usual, thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.